بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد so we've completed the first line uh, in which the Imam said تمسك بحبل الله واتبع لهدى hold on to the rope of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and follow the guidance what was the rope of Allah the Quran the Sunnah the Wahi in general نعم the revelation of Allah سبحانه وتعالى واتبع لهدى how many types of guidance Two. What are they? Dilal wal Ikshad. Hida to tow. Fiq min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. What is the difference between the two? Uh, now, the first, Naam. Al Ikshad, or guidance, or teaching, or showing, is general to everybody the prophets, the scholars, and every single Muslim in general. Second, Naam. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyib. Al-Bid'ah. What is a Bid'ah? Anything that's been added into the religion of Allah Jalla wa'ala? Without? Nah, without any evidence that a person does in order to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. Then the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, <coughs> وَلَا تَكُوا بِدْعِيًا The word لَعَلَّكَ It may be. Or لَعَلَّكَ As the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, or as you can see in the translation, that you may attain salvation. Yani it may be that you, so that you may succeed. So that you may succeed. La'alla in general is for taraji, hoping. La'alla hada yaqa. It may be that that will happen. Lakin here, if we're talking about a person that follows the Quran and the Sunnah, then la'alla means that it definitely will happen. Why? Because if a whole person holds on to the Quran and the Sunnah, father, if a person holds on to the Quran and the Sunnah, then that is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will be guided and that they will be upon those, they will be from those that are saved from the fire and saved from misguidance. Like when we're looking at the individual himself, then la'allaka is a form of helping you to have raja in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hoping in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning just because you've held on to, held on to the kitab of Allah and you've the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Do not now think That khalas, I'm from the people of Jannah La. Even with that And even though you're practicing the religion of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala You should still hope In the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala And ask Allah Jalla Wa'ala to not misguide you Then the Shaykh says Rahimahullah وَدِن بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَالسُنَنِ اللَّتِي أَتَتْ عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ تَنْجُوا وَتَرْبَحُ Also the Shaykh says Rahimahullah وَدِن بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ أَن Hold on to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and practice the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, hold on to was sunan illati and the sunan, the narrations that have come from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you hold on, hold on to that, then you will earn the reward and that you will be uh, na'am, guided. You will be guided and you will profit from holding on to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Taib. So in this line and in the previous line, the Sheikh mentions a very important topic or mas'ala which is Mastaru talaqi inda ahl al-ilm Inda ahl al-sunnah Mastaru talaqi Where do ahl al-sunnah derive their rulings from? With regards to aqeedah Ahl al-sunnah derive their rulings from The Quran And the sunnah of Allah The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That's why the Sheikh is saying Rahimahullah Tamasak bihablillah Hold on to the revelation and stay away from innovation. Here he's saying, وَدِّنْ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ Practice the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The deen is that which a person is constantly affiliated with, that which he constantly has. He's always in a state of practice in his religion. And that is in every religion. A person doesn't change his religion just like that. طيب. Also, we see... وَدِّنْ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ Hold on to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and practice the religion of Allah at all times. So often you will find people saying that he's a practicing Muslim or she's a practicing Muslim. This terminology is incorrect. That terminology should not be used by a Muslim with regards to their religion. Yes, it can be said he's a practicing lawyer, he's a practicing accountant, practicing solicitor, whatever it may be. 
just to show that that person at that particular time, he's carrying out that job. Lakin for the Muslim, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Wa'bud Rabbaka hatta yatiyaka al-yaqeen. Therefore, you should always and constantly be a person who is practicing the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like in sadly today, it's like as if we have two tier system. A practicing Muslim and a non-practicing Muslim. And that wasn't known in the past. In the Sahaba, it wasn't something that was known. If the, if the Prophet sallallahu said something, then it would be done. If Allah jalla wa'ala commanded the Muslims with something, it would be done. They wouldn't say, la, because I'm not a practicing Muslim, I'm not going to practice it. I'm not going to do it. La. Udkhulu fi silmi kafa. Enter into the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in totality. Tayyip. Naam. Then the Sheikh says, rahimahullah, the next set of lines. What are they on? Aqidat al sunnah fi kalamillah. So now, Without even starting the lines, you already know what to expect, sah? Right? Lakin in summary, the Shaykh Rahimahullah is going to talk about a mas'ala, something that occurred during the Salaf al-Salih, the time of the three golden generations, and just after them. Right? It is the issue to do with the Qur'an of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that relates to the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the Qur'an is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In these coming three, four lines, he is going to mention the correct methodology. Pay attention. In these coming lines, he is going to mention the correct methodology and three innovated, two or three innovated methodologies that we should stay away from. So he's going to mention the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah and three innovated methodologies that we should stay away from. And I'm going to mention the evidences of Ahlul Sunnah for this mas'ala. But we're not going to mention the evidences of Ahlul Bid'ah. So I'm going to mention the evidence for Ahlul Sunnah for every mas'ala that is mentioned in the book. It's found in the explanations. It's not something that I've come with. The explanations of the book, of the scholars. So like in today, we're only going to study the evidences of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And that is for two reasons, and write them down. So write down, we will be studying the correct methodology of Ahlul Sunnah in every mas'ala. Along with its evidence, inshallah, we may mention those who oppose Ahlul Sunnah. We may mention, or we will mention, those who oppose Ahlul Sunnah. But we won't study their evidences and their doubts. But we won't study their evidences and their doubts for two reasons. For two reasons. The first reason is that we should first study, understand. and become well-grounded in the correct belief of a Muslim, in the correct belief of the Muslim. The second reason we won't mention their evidences or their misconceptions and their doubts their shubhat is that I may mention the shubha, I may mention the doubt, I may mention the doubt 
So you understand the doubt. But you may not necessarily understand the answer to that doubt. But you may not necessarily understand the answer to that doubt. Therefore, lead into, therefore, lead into that shubha or that doubt sticking in your heart. Lead into that shubha or that doubt remaining in your heart. So, these are the two reasons. And take that along with you in general, whenever you're studying. First and foremost, perfect the aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah with its evidences. And when you're on that stage, do not listen to the doubts of Ahlul Bid'ah. This is what they use and this is what they use. Because when I say the answer, to the, when I say the shubha, you might understand the shubha. Like my answer might be weak. You may not necessarily answer it, uh, understand it. Therefore, you've got what? You've got a doubt and no answer. A doubt and no answer. On this mabhath, we're going to start with the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a lot of the, yani the beginning of the book talks about some of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are some principles that I want you to write down that will help you understand the names, of the, and, and, names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These principles will help you understand the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you won't get confused later on and you won't need to stop at every single attribute. You won't need to what? Stop at every single attribute. So you understand the meaning and khalas, once you understand the meaning you won't be confused because you've already studied these principles. The first principle. So write, قَوَاعِدُ تَقْصِيلِيَّةٌ في فهم باب الأسماء والصفات Principles or essential principles in understanding the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The first one أسماء الله وصفاته وهي تؤخذ من القرآن والسنة للعقل لا العقل and that means the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are tawqifi, something which is called tawqifi, meaning it can only be derived from the Quran and the Sunnah, not on our intellect. It cannot be derived from our intellect. So, what is that first principle? Nah. The names of Allah Jalla wa Ala and attributes of Allah. What does tawqifi mean? It means it is found in the Qur'an of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Not in our aql. We cannot make up or think of and give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names and attributes. Al-Qa'idah to Thani, the second Qa'idah. Yajibu an nu'mina bi kulli Yajibu an nu'mina بكل أسماء الله وصفاته مما ورد في النصوص الشرعية يجب أن نؤمن بكل أسماء الله وصفاته مما ورد في النصوص الشرعية It is obligatory upon us 
to believe in the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. We believe in the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The third principle Nusbitu lillahi Nusbitu lillahi ta'ala Ma athbatu Ma athbatahu li nafsihi Aw athbatahu Rasuluhu Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Min ghayri takyifin Wala tamthilin ولا تحريف ولا تعطيل We believe in the names and attributes We affirm for Allah Third principle is We affirm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Those names and attributes that he has affirmed for himself Or his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed for him Without Giving it a form, giving it a how, for example. For example, Allah spoke to Musa, and we say in this X, Y, Z manner. Khalas, that is haram. Bila takif. Wala tamthil, and without likening it to the attributes of the creation. Without likening it to the attributes of the creation. وَلَا تَحْرِيفٍ تَحْرِيف means without distorting the meaning changing the meaning i.e. Allah Jalla wa'ala says Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arshi stawa and then Ahlul Bid'a come and say stawla so they change the actual meaning and the fourth is what وَلَا تَعْطِيل and without negating Without negating. Who can summarize that principle? Put your hand up and I'll choose someone. Who can summarize this principle? Um, How a form? No. And without negating it. Negating it. You will understand, sir. Go on. MashaAllah. <laughs> Jazakallah khair. How old are you? 11, Jazakallah Khair. Sure. That principle of Ahlul Sunnah, whether you say in Arabic or English, it is clear understanding. The 11 year old can understand it. And that shows the beauty of the aqeed of Ahlul Sunnah to Al Jama'ah. To the extent that an 11 year old can understand it. Why? Because the revelation was sent to everybody. It wasn't sent to a group of scholars that have been studying Aqidah for 60 years and only they can understand it. It was sent to the awam of the Muslimin. It was sent to all of the Muslims. These four wordings that you've understood now, that you've heard, or this principle, is there any confusion in it? Billahi alaykum, is there any confusion in it? La. Ya akhi, affirm for Allah what he has affirmed for himself. Don't say Allah does it in this way. Don't say Allah's attribute is like our attribute. And also, don't negate it. And also, don't change it. خلاص. Keep it as it is in the Quran and the Sunnah. See how easy it is? That's why it's easier to be upon the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam than it is to be upon Bid'ah. Bid'ah, you have to go out of your way 
and change and distort and negate the beautiful names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khayyakan. What's your name? Muhammad. Jazakallah khayyakan. Jazakallah khayyakan. Tayyib, the third principle. نُثْبِتُ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مَا أَثْبَتَهُ لِنَفْسِهِ أَوْ أَثْبَتَهُ رَسُولُهُ صلى الله عليه وسلم رابع نُثْبِتُ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مَا أَثْبَتَهُ لِنَفْسِهِ أَوْ أَثْبَتَهُ رَسُولُهُ صلى الله عليه وسلم رابع نُثْبِتُ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مَا أَثْبَتَهُ لِنَفْسِهِ أَوْ أَثْبَتَهُ رَسُولُهُ صلى الله عليه وسلم سواء وجد سواء وجد بال بالتواتري بالتواتري أو بالأحاد بالتواتري أو بالأحاد So we affirm the names of attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala With regards to the sunnah Whether they are from sunnah mutawatir Meaning they have come from many chains of narrations Or they've come through one or two or three narrations Chains of narrations that is something that is studied in Ilm al-Hadith يعني مصطلح حديث Like in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam There are those ahadith that have come with many chains of narrations And then there are some ahadith that have been narrated by two or three or four individuals Or five individuals The meaning of this principle is we believe in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as it is We don't say we're not going to take those things that are narrated by one or two or three Narrations, and we're going to accept that which has been narrated in, in abundance. The most important thing that we have to look at is, is is it firmly attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu Is it authentic? If it is authentic, then we what? Believe in it, and what? Act upon it. We believe in it and we act upon it. طيب. The next principle. And this is the last one, number six. Ma'na or sifati. Is this number five? Khalas. Ma'na sifati. Ma'lumun. Ma'na or sifati. Ma'lumun. Wal kayfu. Majhulun. والإيمان به واجب والسؤال عنه بدعة والسؤال عنه بدعة and this means that the meaning of the attributes are known when someone says to you Allah has mercy upon his servants You'll all understand if your mind hasn't been polluted with misguidance, what it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon his servants. So that is the meaning of the first one. The meaning of the attribute is known. Well kayful majhul, as for the how, it is majhul to us, it is unknown to us. As for the how, it is unknown for us, not unknown to us. وَالْإِمَانُ بِهِ وَاجِبْ لَكِنْ It is wajib or obligatory upon us to believe in it. Why is it obligatory for us to believe in it? Because it's from the Kitab and the Sunnah. Allah Jalla wa Ala and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have affirmed it. It's in the Quran and the Sunnah. وَالسُّؤَالُ عَنْهُ بِدْعَ And asking about it is a bid'a. How does this happen? And how does this happen? So this principle number five applies to all principles. However, this principle is derived from the statement of Imam Malik where he was teaching in the Prophet's Messenger and a man came to him and said to him, كيف استوى? How is استوى? And he said, الاستواء معلوم. استواء, how Allah rise, يعني, the meaning of Allah rose above his throne. The meaning is wadih, the meaning is clear. معلوم, it is known. Well, kayfu majhul, he said. As for the how, it is majhul. We do not know. Well, imanu bihi wajibun. And to believe in it is wajib. Because it's found in the Quran and the Sunnah. Was su'alu anhu bid'a. 
and asking about it is a bid'ah. Like, why is it a bid'ah? Because the companions did not ask about it. The Prophet did not ask about it. Rahman and al I believed it like that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The companions did not ask about it. Ya Rasulullah, kayf istawa? They did not ask him. Therefore, we as Muslims, we follow their guidance. We can't come with new things that they haven't done. They haven't asked about. So that is why he said, وَالسُّؤَالُ anhu bid'a." So this principle is, principle, is, principle is extremely important in applying it to all of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we shall see. So memorize that qa'idah, and when we're studying this, inshallah, these books, or these attributes, then we shall understand it. طيب. Then the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, the Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, in the third line, وَقُلْ غَيْرُ مَخْلُوقٍ كَلَامُ مَلِيكِنَا بِذَلِكَ دَانَ الْأَتْقِيَاءُ أَفْصَحُ وَلَا تَكُوا فِي الْقُرْآنِ بِالْوَقْفِ قَائِلًا كَمَا قَالَ أَتْبَاعٌ لِجَهْمِ وَأَسْجَحُ وَلَا تَقُلْ وَلَا تَقُلْ لِلْقُرْآنَ خَلْقًا قِرَاءَةً فَإِنَّ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ بِاللَّفْظِ يُوضَحْ In these three lines, the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala Rahmatan Wasi'a is telling us the aqeedah of Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah with regards to the Qur'an of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh, the Imam, is teaching us the aqeedah of Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah with regards to the Qur'an of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this bid'ah appeared during the time of Imam Ahmed, about 200 years after the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like with all other bid'ahs, innovations, it came into the ummah. It appeared into the ummah. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa died, the religion was complete. All of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa were upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he himself said, alaykum sunnati wa sunnati al rashidin. Upon you is my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa that came after me. Abu Bakr and Umar, Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhu. Then during the companion's era and during the tabi'un, there weren't a lot of innovations. Although there was the bid'ah of the khawarij, as we shall see, inshallah, and the bid'ah of the shia and so on, like, and that was at the beginning and there were a lot of companions that spoke against it. After about 200 years, a bid'ah called khalq al bid'ah to khalq al-Qur'an, the innovation of saying the Qur'an is created, makhluq came into this ummah. And that was at the beginning of around roughly the fifth uh, Khalifa of, or the sixth Khalifa of the Abbasi era. Whereas during the time of Harun al-Rashid, Harun al-Rashid was a person who had the correct aqeed of the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu So the group called the Mu'tazila, who were deviants, who relied upon their aql, their intellect, to understand the Qur'an and the Sunnah, during his time, they were in hiding. Like when he died and his sons took over, the Khilafah, that's when they appeared, and that is when they started to force this false or innovated ideology upon the Muslims. And the scholars were beaten and tested, and anyone who said the Qur'an was... The word of Allah would be killed. Anyone who said it wasn't created would be thrown into jail and in prison and beaten. And they wouldn't be given any status or any uh, roles in, in the government or even within the community. That is why you hear of the fitna of Imam Ahmed. Rahimahullah. That is why Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, is called Imam Ahl Sunnah, the Imam of Ahl Sunnah. Because that fitna that appeared, there were many scholars that were killed. May Allah Jalla wa'ala have mercy upon every single one of them. Imam Ahmed was among those who was not killed, like he was tortured and tortured and tortured, to the extent that he could not stand up. And he wasn't being tortured because he stole something or he had killed someone, like he was tortured because he said the Qur'an is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is when that fitna came about. That is when that fitna came about during the time of Ma'moon 
Wathiq, or Mu'tasim and Wathiq. Those three Khulafa punished everybody who was upon the correct Aqeedah. And all of them were around during the time of Imam Ahmad and all of them died in his lifetime. And then Allah Jalla wa ala sent a person called Al-Mutawakkil Billah who was upon the Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And then that fitna was lifted from the Muslims. So the Sheikh says, وَقُلْ غَيْرُ مَخْلُوقٍ كَلَامُ مَلِيكِنَا Say that the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not created. So that is the Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. That the Quran of Allah is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we know it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because it is found in the Quran and the Sunnah. قال جل وعلا وإن أحد من المشركين استجارك فأجره حتى يسمع كلام الله الله سبحانه وتعالى says that in سورة التوبة also Allah جل وعلا says وكلم الله موسى تكليما and Allah جل وعلا spoke with موسى a speaking shows that Allah جل وعلا spoke with موسى also Allah جل وعلا says ولما جاء موسى لميقاتنا وكلمه ربه when Musa came to the appointed destination and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him. Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا سَيُكَلِّمُهُ اللَّهُ رَبُّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ تُرْجُمَانٍ There is not one of you except يعني يوم القيامة There is not one of you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak with him. And there is an interpreter, a translator between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These evidences, what do you understand from them? That Allah Jalla wa ala speaks to his servants. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to his servants. So the sifa of kalam, the sifa of Allah Jalla wa ala speaking is a sifa of Allah. It's an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we understand it? Apply the very last principle that you understood. Al-kalamu ma'alumun. Al-kalam is known. Wal-kayfu majhulun. And kayf, the how, is not known to us. Wal-imanu bihi wajibun. Wal-su'alu anhu bid'a. Khalas. Now you've understood the aqeed of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Apply that with every single principle, every single name and attribute of Allah we shall study. Just change the kalam bit to a nuzul, for example, or any other attribute that we're going to study. So that is the aqeed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, that the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are two things that we're affirming that the kalam of Allah is the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Quran is from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran is sifa min sifatillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. The kalam is a sifa from the asma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the attributes of Allah. And the Quran is from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is not created. Why? Because Allah jalla wa ala is addressing us. Allah is commanding us, do this, do not do that. And Allah is telling us about Himself. To say that it is created leads to the false ideology of saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is created. So having that belief has dangerous ramifications. So the Quran, the Sheikh says, rahimahullah, and say that the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the kalam of Allah jalla wa ala. طيب. بذلك دان الأتقياء وأفصحوا بذلك يعني with that with what? The Qur'an being the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the aqeedah that those pious people before us, those muttaqoon, those that feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is what they took as a religion. That is what they took as a religion. That is what they practiced and they got closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. Is that understood? طيب. Now the shaykh rahimahullah, or now we're going to go into those people that opposed the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah in this. Number one, so the first methodology is the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, sah? which is what? Al Quranu Kalamullah. It is not 
created. And the kalam is the sifa and attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah speaks to whom he wills, when he, when, when he wills. طيب. The second madhab is that the Qur'an is makhluq. That the Qur'an is created. Is that the Qur'an of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is created. And we understand that in this line. So when he's saying... Qul say that the Qur'an is not created In reality he's also telling us That there are people that believe the Qur'an is created So he mentions that there Is that understood? How many methodologies now? Two, the first The Aqid of Ahl sunnah second the, Those that say the, the, I mean, Those that say the Qur'an is Makhluq Then the Sheikh says Rahimahullah وَلَا تَكُوا فِي الْقُرْآنِ بِالْوَقْفِ قَائِلَى and do not say waqf with the kitab. Do not do al-waqf. Al-waqf means here. So when Ahlul Sunnah knew of these people that said the Quran was makhluq, right? They knew that Ahlul Sunnah refuted them. And they said, La al Quran kalamullah, sah? Right. Then there were those people who wanted to mix ambiguous words and to bring deception into it in order for people to take and accept their evil ideology they said Allahu alam, we don't know we're not going to say the Quran is makhluq and we're not going to say the Quran is not makhluq so the first methodology affirmed that the Quran is what? it's not makhluq it is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second methodology which is a false methodology they said what? the Quran is makhluq Ahlul Sunnah refuted them. Then there were those that said, no, do you know what? If Ahlul Sunnah, if we say that the Quran is makhluq, we're going to be reje rejected and refuted by Ahlul Sunnah, by the majority of people. So let's say something else that they may not clock onto. Let's say, Allahu A'lam, ma nadiri. Could be created, it could be not. Natawaqqaf. And that was haram as well. Or well, that is haram. That is why the Shaykh says, rahimahullah, wala taku fil Quran bil waqfi qa'ila. Do not say, that the Qur'an is not created. Or do not say that the Qur'an is created. I'm going to keep middle ground. That is haram. It is not permissible to do. كَمَا قَالَ أَتْبَاعٌ لِجَهْمٍ وَأَسْجَحُ Like some of the followers of Jahm عَلَيْهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا يستحق, Just like he said. And Jahm Safwan was from the early Mubtadi'a or innovators that had so many misguidances in Ummah. He was a shaitan in this Ummah. Who invented so many mis misguidances? Taib. What was the third methodology? Al Waqf. Say, La, we're not going to say the Quran is the kalam of Allah. We're not going to say the Quran is not created, and we're not going to say the Quran is created. So they they want to be what was up? Was that the correct methodology? La. It's like some people they say now, we're not going to say. That celebrating the birthday of the Prophet is an innovation. But we're not going to say it is legislated. What middle ground is there then? Either this or that. It's either legislated or not legislated. You can't come with middle ground here. So you say that the method and innovation, the celebrating of the birthday of the Prophet or the birthday of the Prophet is a bid'ah, an innovation. Khalas. Call a spade a spade. So here you say, the Sheikh is saying, do not say. وَلَا تَقُلْ بِالْقُرْآنِ لا, what was it? وَلَا تَقُلْ فِي الْقُرْآنِ بِالْوَقْفِ قَائِلَ اي لا تَقُلْ الْوَقْفَ بِالْقُرْآنِ طيب. Then the Sheikh says, رحمه الله, in the th uh, fifth line, وَلَا تَقُلْ الْقُرْآنَ خَلْقًا قِرَاءَةً or قِرَاءَتُهُ as well, in another uh, narration on this. فَإِنَّ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ بِاللَّفْضِ يُوضَحُ طيب. Now, we're going on to the fourth methodology. These ones understood that if you say that the Qur'an is makhluq, you're going to get refuted. Then they also said, if you say al-waqf, if you say, I don't know, man, I'm going to keep me the ground, you're also going to get what? Refuted. So they said, you know what? My recitation of the Qur'an is created. Lafzi bil Quran makhluq. My recitation. 
And in it there's deception and they wanted to deceive Ahlul Sunnah. So they wanted to have the evil ideology whilst at the same time trying to please the crowds. Like in Ahlul Sunnah they understood this. That's why Imam Ahmed said, Man qala lafzi bil Qur'an makhluqun fahuwa jahmi. Then he is a jahmi. Whoever says that my wording of the Qur'an is makhluq, then he is a jahmi. Meaning he's exactly like those that say the Qur'an is makhluq. No difference. Is that understood? طيب. How many madahib do we have now? Four. The first madhab is the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, sah? And they say what? غير مخلوق. The kalam of Allah, the Qur'an is the kalam of Allah and it is not created. The second methodology, which is a batil methodology, is what? It is makhluq, it is created. And Ahlul Sunnah refuted them. The second, the third methodology, al-waqf. Khalas, we're not going to say created or not created. Khalas, that was also batil. Why was it batil? Because they wanted to deceive the people to make out as if they were pious people. We're not going to say that or that. And also they haven't spoken the truth. The truth is that the Qur'an of Allah Jalla wa'ala is not created. It's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about the fourth methodology? Lafzi bil Qur'an. My reading of the Qur'an is created. And Imam Ahmed said they are like the Jahmiya. He is a Jahmi. So with regards to this lakin, with regards to this last point, it was badil in the sense that there was ijmal in it. It was a general statement that could mean this and that. And the person that is a Sunni, that is following the methodology of the Salaf or Salih, he makes his wording clear. So if a person, so the scholars mention with regards to this mas'ala, when a person says, lafti bil Qur'an makhluq, if he means my wording, my, me, my creation, the, read, the way I'm reading, the voice box, the tongue, the mouth that I'm reading with, me, this is created, then that meaning is sound. There's nothing wrong with it. Because the Basha, we're created anyway. So our actions are also what? Created. Lakin if they're, if they're referring to the wording that is coming out, then that is the word of who? Allah Jalla wa ala. That is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we cannot say that that is created. Rather we say that anyone that says lafti bil Qur'an or my reading of the Qur'an or my recitation of the Qur'an is created, then that is batil. You have to take the correct stance of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. That's why Ahlul Sunnah they say Al-Kalamu Kalamu al was sawtu sawtu al-qari al-kalamu the kalam that i'm speaking kalamu al-bari is the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sawtu and the sound that i'm giving out sawtu al-qari is the sawt or the sound of the reciter khalas so these are the three madhabs that are involved or that are in or these four madhabs there's a fifth madhab, the madhab of the Asha'ira and the Maturidiyya. They say that the Qur'an is not makhluq, it's not created, like it is an expression, hikayah, or kalam nafsi. Kalam nafsi, and it is wording that is found in the person that spoke it, or the one that spoke it. It's confusing because even they were confused when they said it. And it's something that doesn't make sense. Because now every one of us is thinking of something, sah? Right. Can someone say to you, you're speaking now? Of course not. You're thinking to yourself. Had a hadith nafs. You're talking to yourself. Like, and that's not speaking, that's not talking. So they say that Allah Jalla wa ala didn't speak this Quran, rather Jibreel. Took it from the Lawh al Mahfuz. Jibreel took it from the Lawh al Mahfuz. So these are the methodologies that we have to stay away from the, uh, with regards to the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lakin, in summary, apply that principle that we studied earlier on. Al Kalamu Ma'loom. Wal Kaifu 
majhul. Well, imanu bihi wajib, and it's wajib to believe in it. And su'al anhu bid'a. Also, the other principles, we affirm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which he has what? Affirmed for himself. That which he has affirmed for himself. Jalla wa ala tayyib. We'll stop on that note, inshallah, because Asr is in about four or five minutes' time, and we'll continue from page six. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa ahkamu billahi tawfiq.